everyone, I'm Abby. I'm working on making an everyday cotton simple regency dress out of fabric I bought a while back. This tiny green and blue floral print. I'm joining my costume friends for a hashtag relaxed regency so long, so I chose to get this dress done. Don't mind the photo in the background. I may have already finished it. I wanted to make something similar to some of the things I've seen in the Jane Austen movies I've been watching, especially the BBC Pride and Prejudice miniseries from 1995. I love watching that one. So many great dresses. The closest one I saw to this dress is the one worn by Lydia with the long sleeves under the short puff sleeves, self-fabric piping and self-fabric buttons down the back. It's less gathering in the front than the white Regency dress I made earlier this year, so I'll have to edit my pattern that I modified already to make this. I already have all the underpinnings. I made the red threaded long corded stays and the chemise that was also in the red threaded pattern. I created my bodice petticoat from images I found on Pinterest, along with the skirt part of my McCall's pattern I've been using. There really aren't any underwear or bloomers that are worn in that time period much. There are a few depictions of bloomer legs tied to the waist, but not many. They just didn't wear them back then. It made it easier to go to the restroom without taking your whole outfit off. So come along with me as I make a Regency dress. This will be a series of videos. This first video will put together the bodice and the skirt. I started with pre-washing, drying, and ironing my cotton fabric so it will shrink before I cut the pattern pieces out. I've combined and modified two patterns to get the dress to be what I want. I'm using American Duchess Simplicity 8941 and McCall's 7493. I wanted the puffed sleeve from the McCall's pattern, but more gathers, so I expanded the sleeve to make it a little wider. I find the American Duchess pattern is a bit more historically accurate in the bodice construction lines, but I didn't want to gather the waist and bust with a string and have it open in the front. I wanted the buttons, like on Lydia's dress. The bodice front from the American Duchess works great for this still. I added one and a half inches at the waistline because the bust is too short for me. I'm taller than most patterns, so this is how I add part of my height in. I also do the same to the bodice lining. I will gather the bust front piece down to fit to the bodice lining that has a dart in it to fit. The McCall's pattern has a button back, so I add that part to my American Duchess pattern. I'm just widening the back piece so there is an overlap, and I'll cut a facing piece for each side as well. I prefer the skirt pieces from the McCall's pattern because they are tapered instead of being rectangles. I want the front to be flat and the back to be gathered. It also uses a little less fabric. I don't think I have enough fabric if I use the skirt from the American Duchess pattern. Diana wants to help! I add 3 inches to the bottom of the skirt hem. This is where I get the rest of my height in. I'm 5 foot 11 inches, so I never fit the standard size. <laughs> I double the fabric and cut out the skirt pieces first, and clip the markers. The front piece is on the fold. I place the bodice pieces where they fit. I need to cut four each of the back pieces so I have lining as well. I also cut the bicep sleeve cuff so that I have the right width to gather the puff sleeve to. The front bodice pieces need to be cut on the fold, so I do those next, one each, the gathered bodice and the darted lining. I place and cut the puff sleeve. I only need two because they won't be lined. I want a detachable long sleeve for this dress that goes under the puff sleeve, so I get the American Duchess pattern for this as well. I cut the pattern where it's marked in the middle and add 3 inches to the length. Beanie wanted to be involved too! I cut strips of fabric about 1 inch-ish in width to prepare for all the piping I will be adding. 
I'm starting with sewing up all the seams of the skirt. I'm using the sewing machine to do these long seams. I will be doing a lot of hand sewing later on though. I make sure to leave the top bit open for the opening in the back. I iron the skirt at this point, folding under the raw edges at the top and pinning to prepare for hand sewing. I iron the seam to the side as I will be hand filling all these seams. Here I'm using white cotton thread to hand fill the back opening of the skirt in place. This time I'm actually using beeswax. It helps when hand sewing to add strength to the thread and help it not twist as much. I'm cutting one side of my seam to about one quarter inch and then folding under the other raw edge and pinning it in place. I then use the cotton thread to hand fill the seams in place. I'm using a pencil and ruler to mark the darts on the bodice front lining. I then pinned the darts and machine sew them up. I tie a knot at the top of the point instead of going back and forth. It helps the dart to lay flatter. I'm marking the seam edge of the bodice pieces with pencil to prepare to hand sew the piping in. I machine sewed the piping in half, about a quarter inch from the folded edge. I'm using the butcher's twine that I used to cord my stays to create the piping. I take a large blunt tapestry needle and push it through the piping channel to create piping. I then pin this to the back bodice pieces, following the seam lines I created and I hand sew using doubled cotton thread and a sturdy hand back stitch. I pinned the lining together along the bodice curved pieces in the back and pinned the sides together and shoulder pieces. I also pinned the outside bodice piece together at the sides. I'm not adding piping there. 
I machine sew all those seams together. I press all the seams so far, pressing the curved seam up. I also press the seam that has the piping in it. I press the darts as well. I had the shoulder seam marked, ready to put the piping there. I hadn't originally planned on putting piping there, but I realized it showed in the back and was a good place to add some. I pressed the placket down according to the pattern. I don't think I showed placing the facing in, but there's a piece of fabric basted in. I fold it under the raw edge and press that as well. I will hand whip stitch that in place. I also press the skirt at this point. Here I'm going to hand fell the raw edges of the bodice so far, the piped edge too. I cut the seam to one quarter inch underneath, leaving the seam allowance on top. I clip the curves a bit, and then fold under the raw edges and pin in place. I wax my cotton thread and start hand felling the bodice seams that I just pinned. So much hand felling. Rest in peace my fingers. I got my quilting roller out for marking the seam allowance on the waistline of the bodice and the neckline. I pin the piping onto the whole neckline and waistline. I hand base the piping onto the lining first. This is how I get it to sit right before adding the other side. I really didn't show it well before, but here we go. I don't have footage of it, just a few pictures. But I attach the bodice to the lining at the neckline, gathering the front of the bust by hand and fitting it to the size of the lining, sewing along the piping, and then I flip it to the outside. I also measured the waist piece and created the right size piping. I had pinned it to the lining side, but it needed to be sewn to the outside piece so I can gather the front bust at the bottom waist part before sewing the skirt on. I press the neckline so the piping sits at the right spot. I also press up the lining so it will be easier when I go to finish the skirt. I had to re-press the placket on the bodice. I had pressed it on the wrong line, so I fixed it here. In the second part next week, I will attach the skirt, do the sleeves, and show the finished project. I also have a few other videos planned. A getting ready in Regency attire, hair and makeup, and also a video on the making of a fichu. If you liked this video, stay tuned for more Regency videos and other sewing videos in the future. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing! Blah blah blah. Do no. Blah. and show the finished product project project blah